Microscopy offers tremendous power to observe and interrogate biological systems. In the past, experiments done by microscopy were typically analyzed by eye qualitatively, but now it's feasible to quantify the phenotypes that we observe through image analysis. Images are a powerful readout due to their richness and flexibility. Microscopy can be used to examine biological systems, isolate proteins to organelles to tissues, all the way up to entire organisms. Microscopy offers single cell resolution and multiplexing, where you detect multiple phenomena using different labels. And the focus of our video today is quantifying images through image analysis. I'm Kevin Alceri, faculty at UW-Madison, and I lead the Open Source ImageJ project. And I'm Ann Carpenter. I'm an institute scientist at the Broad Institute of Harvard and MIT, and I lead the Open Source Cell Profiler project. Both of these are open source software platforms for image analysis. But today, we won't be talking about ImageJ or Cell Profiler. There will be supplementary videos on each of these that you can watch later if you'd like to learn more about how they are used. Instead, this video series is going to focus on the general steps of image processing. Pre-processing, where you prepare your images for analysis. Segmentation, where you identify the biological objects of interest. Tracking, where you're following moving objects over time. And measurement and phenotype classification, where the relevant biological properties of interest are quantified. We'll also cover some best practices for working with bioimage data. These steps will apply to any kind of image analysis you might do, whether it's with a, with a commercial tool or many of the free open source tools uh, that you might use. It also applies whether it's classical image analysis uh, algorithms or machine learning. By learning about the basic principles and the common tasks, you'll be better equipped to work whatever software you choose. Speaking of which, how do you choose a specific tool? There are so many options. Where do you go for help? You can search the scientific community image form that we started at form.image.se to see if others have worked out your particular biological system or questions. See our supplemental video about the forum and hear about this great resource and how you can get your questions answered and share the answers to your questions. You might also check out papers in your field or ask colleagues who know your research area to see what they used. And to gather more general knowledge, you can connect to societies such as New Bias in Europe and BINA in North America. They offer conferences and training workshops to gain general knowledge as well as tutorials for particular software tools. As well, this video is part of a whole series on microscopy image analysis. You can check out other iBiology videos on image analysis and also on microscopy hardware and acquisition to learn more about the various steps involved in microscopy and image analysis. And that's a good time to mention that proper image acquisition is crucial when you're quantifying, especially in the case of large experiments where you can't examine each image at by eye. With the power of microscopy comes responsibility, and no amount of fancy image analysis can overcome some of the kinds of image quality problems. So take care to follow pro proper procedures as mentioned in the other videos in this series and in this blog post linked here, so that the images you collect will be suited to answer your biological question. It's always important, as we've mentioned uh, here and also elsewhere in the video series, good data in, good data out. If the key is not to use image analysis to correct for things that you could have fixed as part of your image acquisition. It's important to remember to have quality control to identify issues with your imaging, whether it's blurry because out of focus, maybe the wrong immersion medium was used, or you have debris in your field. It's also, to know the, it's also important to know the capabilities of your system so you avoid resolution beyond what you can collect, both spatially and temporally. Understand your microscope. It's also important when you do long time-lapse imaging to minimize bleaching. You don't want your sample to be overexposed to cause problems in later detection or even affect the health of the organism. And as well, when you look at your microscope, understand how it's set up, know how to optimize it, and deal with issues such as intensity variations due to uneven lighting that may also cause problems for signal to noise being too low, especially for time-lapse. That is where proper controls are critical. Use controls to set up your microscope that are consistent instead of using the real biology to set it up. So let's get started quantifying.